Good evening. <clears throat> I call to order the November meeting of the Florence City Planning Commission. And on behalf of uh, the, the planning staff and the commissioners here tonight, um, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, it's very important that you know when we are trying to do the people's business that the people are here and and um, we have a great community and your participation means so much to us. Um, there are a, a couple of things I'd like to kind of get clear in the beginning and that is when we have a fairly good crowd like this, we have um, protocol or procedure. Um, we will have the staff discuss um, each item on the agenda. Um, there are several that will have a public hearing portion of that. And um, once staff has made its um, presentation, uh, I'll open the public hearing and I'll allow um, you, the people, in this room to come forward if you'd like to. Um, I guess the the courtesy and the procedural part of that is um, you raise your hand and um, I'll certainly um, invite you as I get to you and like to try to limit maybe three, no more than five minutes at the podium if, uh, if you need that much time. Um, you'll always address the commissioners. Um, um, we don't um, approve of any finger pointing or looking in the direction of another applicant or something like that. Um, another thing is we are a recommending body. Um, we have no way of what decision is made here tonight by these commissioners um, it will be a recommendation to the city council. The city council is actually the one that will uh, decide on, on these items on the agenda. Um, and typically it will be two readings to city council. So um, as we go through our agenda tonight um, and your item comes up and rather than stick around for the remaining items, you're, you're welcome in an orderly and quiet fashion to uh, exit if you need to. Um, and, um, but other than that, it, uh, we've had very good luck and success. Orange is a great town. and. And uh, we do get into issues sometimes that um, concern other uh, citizens and members of the community. But um, we've got a great uh, commission. Uh, our commissioners are well seasoned and and uh, very proud of them. Um, just for the record, and also for the um, the minutes, I would like to acknowledge that one of our commissioners. Uh, Mr. Charles Howard lost his mother um, about a week and a half ago, and certainly um, our, the commissioners here are like family. And when we lose uh, a loved one, we we want to acknowledge our um, our sympathies and and um, certainly hope they have a a period of healing. Um, the first item on the agenda is actually our invocation, and um, um, who is going to be our? I think Mr. Moses did it last week. So, Mr. Bacot? I did. Oh, you did last week? Okay, Mr. Moses? I'd be glad to. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for gathering us together one more time. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Lord, we want to look out for the citizens of this community. Let them know that we are grateful for the whole community, not just one. When we make our decisions, let's make it do the right for everybody, not just one. These are the blessing us in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Moses. Um, the next item is approval of the minutes. The commissioners have received their packet, which uh, included our minutes from last month. Uh, one of the items on our agenda tonight was a um, deferred item uh, from last month, but um, the commissioners had a chance to review. Um, so I'll ask if there are a motion to be approved in the minutes from last meeting. Okay, second. I have a motion, Mr. Bico, you said you, you second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay, and the ayes have it unanimously. Um, the next item is public hearing uh, and matter in position for action PC 2030, excuse me, 2021-32. Time to put the glasses on, Drew. <laughs> um, this is a request to rezone from AC Activity Center to CG Commercial General. 
Good evening and staff report, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, the vicinity map identifies the proposed rezoning on Second Loop Road between Valparaiso Drive and South Patton Drive. Um, the location map identifies the current location located at 1926 Second Loop Road. Um, in terms of the location, um, the length of the lot is 145, excuse me, 149 feet long. The lot width is 90 feet. Um, the minimum lot width requirement regarding commercial general is 100 feet. So currently, the parcel is not in compliance with the commercial general width requirements. Now, if this property were to get redeveloped in the future, it would be difficult due to the setback requirements. Uh, the current zoning map identifies the property in the Activity Center Zoning District. The Activity Center Zoning District is intended for misuse development. Uh, the future land use map identifies the parcel as commercial auto urban, which encourages, which encourages the concentration of small scale retail offices and business services. Um, this is table 1-2.7.4, commercial uses. Um, according to the table, the land use map is not permitted in the activity center zoning district. However, if city council were to approve the rezoning to commercial general, the land use would be permitted at that location. Um, I would also like to point out that some of the other land uses that wouldn't be allowed in the activity center zoning designation, like for example, like tattoo facilities, um, heavy automobile repair, um, animal veterinary, small or large animals. Um, the businesses listed above are part of the old B2 convenient uh, business district, which the zoning designation converted to activity center. Uh, most of these businesses will fall under the commercial retail land use. Um, the, staff report, the staff report mentioned that a salon would be a second option, which is permitted. However, after talking to the applicant, uh, he mentioned that the second option is off the table. Um, these are site photos of the property, um, you know, the, uh, the front of the property, the rear of the property, the left side of the property, and the right side of the property. And this concludes staff's report. Thank you, sir. Um, any questions from the commissioners for staff? Okay, hearing none. Um, I will open the public hearing portion of this, and what I would like to do is uh, anyone that is not in favor of this to go first to give the applicant a chance to address some of those concerns. Uh, anyone that'd like to come forward that is not in favor of this request, you can raise your hand. Um, okay. All of those are uh, against the request, okay. Um, the lady in the tiger top, excuse me for saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, you were the first one to put your hand up, so please come forward. If you'll give us your name, please. Um, I'm Meg Temple. Good evening, Ms. Temple. Thank you for coming forward. Thank y'all for having me. Okay, so um, this will give you a chance to um, discuss with the commissioners why you feel this is not appropriate or something that you uh, prefer would not pass. So you have the floor. Um, so like I said, I'm Meg Temple. I am the executive director of what's called the Care House of the PD. So we are a children, we are the Children's Advocacy Center for Florence <coughs> County as well as for the surrounding counties. What that means is that we work alongside law enforcement and the Department of Social Services as, long as, the, as well as the solicitor's offices. And we are work alongside them when there is a, um, any form of allegation of child abuse or maltreatment. So that includes sexual abuse, physical abuse, drug endangerment, witness to domestic violence, um, human trafficking, pretty much any type of major issue that or maltreatment that has, will have happened to a child. Those children come to our facility, which is at 1920 Second Leap Road. And they tell their horrible story of abuse. They um, 
work with a medical provider, they get therapy services, the family gets tra trauma services, and we really are like a one-stop shop in regards to child maltreatment. If you look at those pictures, we are direct, we are located directly next to um, this, this piece of land. Um, I mean, the pictures are taken from our parking spot, our side door that faces um, the location. We see between 600 and 700 children a year. And again, those children have already been victimized. There, we know um, my background is I'm a licensed, I am a um, licensed professional counselor. And actually in my background um, as that, before doing trauma work, I did a couple of years as an addictions counselor. So in having, we know there's a, a close coordination of comorbidity in regards to addiction use and types of maltreatment that children incur. And so having an alcohol sales right next door um, where we have families that are coming because there has been alcohol and drug use in their homes and their parents are coming because they're finally getting them back and having treatment and having that right there could be a trigger for these children as well as it could be a problem in regard to the parents recovery. And the other issues that we are concerned about are safety issues with having through traffic and having people hanging around that area. Um, and then the other thing is those initial pictures that you, that you shared showed we used to be located at 1500 Patton Drive, so just on the other side of this property. And before that was demolished, we had a playground area. And so we actually, actually have the letters and the drawings from back in July when we were offered um, a, new, a new playground equipment. And we, are, and we have been in the process of writing a grant in order to be able to put a playground back there, which is directly beside the tree that is right in that facility. So having a playground directly beside the, um, this you know, facility of, of that use would be, I think, detrimental and not healthy. Thank you, Ms. Temple. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Ms. Temple? Thank you, Thank you very much for coming forward. All right, I ask for a show of hands again. Yes, sir, the gentleman in the back. That's you. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Your um, name, sir? My name is Michael Foxworth. Thank you. You may proceed. Thanks for having me. Um, like I said, um, Michael Foxworth, I'm the chair of pediatrics of Hope Health. I'm board certified in general pediatrics and pediatric infectious diseases. I've been an employee of Hope Health for um, now over eight years, practicing uh, multiple specialties of general pediatrics, pediatric infectious diseases, and also child abuse pediatrics. And so um, with the care house of the PD, I perform the forensic medical exams for those patients that have experienced child abuse and neglect. Um, and, and I have to say, I was d deeply concerned upon hearing the potential rezoning of the property next to the office that is shared between us and the care house. And it troubled me and surprised me that of the many retailers already in operation in Florence, and of all the potential locations for new, some might say unneeded liquor stores, that beside a medical building that serves the most vulnerable of our population would even be considered. And so emotionally, it, it definitely disturbed me, but I'm obviously a logical man of science. I spent a lot of years to become so, so I looked at the data as I do most things. And we know that studies show that neighborhoods with higher concentrations of liquor stores also have higher rates of alcohol-related hospitalizations, drunk driving accidents, and pedestrian injuries. A high density of liquor stores is linked to higher levels of crime and violence. Researchers have found that neighborhoods with a high density of liquor stores had higher numbers of childhood accidents, assaults, and child abuse injuries. And while previous research found that clear association between alcohol outlet density and violent crime, 
there's been ongoing debate actually about whether on or off-premise outlets are more closely linked to violent crime, but that debate has actually been settled with more recent data that clearly showed that outlets that allow for off-site drinking, such as liquor stores, had a greater association with vital violent crimes than outlets that permit only on-site drinking. And so I fear that this is a safety issue for our patients, for our families, our staff due to increased number of people walking through the campus to and from a new potential retailer. I fear that our parents, who we support in their struggle for recovery, that they will be impacted. And I don't want the first image of our children that have experienced abuse and neglect, many associated with the abuse of alcohol, to be a liquor store as they are coming to a facility to begin that, their pathway towards healing. Um, Hope Health Pediatrics is synonymous with serving others, giving hope, changing lives. That's actually our vision at Hope Health. And so I hope that the committee members will consider the impact of what a decision in this rezoning could have on the truthfulness of that statement. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Foxworth. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, the relationship with the care house and Hope Health Pediatrics, is it all in the same building? We are in the same building. Uh, Hope Health Pediatrics, we're on the bottom floor. The care house of the PD is upstairs. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any question for Dr. Foxworth? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, we'll take a couple more that will be interested in. Yes, sir, in the blue in the back. Good evening. Good evening. Brian Patterson. Mr. Patterson, thank you for <coughs> speaking. Thank you all for having us. Um, I am a small business owner and a health care provider at 1842nd Loop. So y'all have just rezoned my property in 2019, um, Florence Family Dental Care. So just want to say thank you for that work in the most recent past. Um, I am also right down the street from uh, the pediatric Hope Health, and it's a concern for patients of, again, foot traffic, safety. Um, we, we are a family dental care office, so we see patients of all ages and not just children where they're coming from, but also the elderly and, you know, the potential for interactions in a parking lot, their concern, and also a concern from a purely zoning standpoint in this area that there is no um, general commercial zoning in this part of Second Loop that if the commission recommends to open that door, what does that mean for other businesses and other opportunities coming in that direction that, um, you know, it's kind of like letting the cat out of the bag. Once you open this property for general commercial, what does that do for other properties in that same area going forward? Thank you. All right. Um, any questions? Thank you very much for coming forward, Mr. Patterson. Anyone else? Yes, sir. You know, the, all the ones that are talking on the back row and nobody's coming from the front row. <laughs> Your name, sir? Yes, my name is Stacy Severance. Mr. Severance, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak briefly. I'm the pastor of Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church. We're just a little ways down from 1926. At 2301, we're actually the new residents of that uh, building and that land. And I want to come here just speaking on behalf of the elders of our church, myself, uh, also Jack Marchetti, <laughs> Tim Bell, and Andy McInville, who provide the leadership of our church. And we support these folks that have already spoken um, to uh, ask the commission to deny the request to consider uh, rezoning uh, this place here for a, a liquor store. I uh, just want to say that while we do affirm the individual's right to uh, purchase and consume alcohol, we don't <coughs> think that it's the best uh, use of that space. We don't think it'll be a benefit to that community in that area. Uh, in fact, we think it would be <clears throat> detrimental. And so uh, I add to what these folks have already stated. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you very much. My pleasure. Anyone else? 
Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Your name, please. I'm um, Tiffany Strauss. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, good evening again. My name is Tiffany Strauss. I'm the Director of Community Relations at Hope Health. My job is a lot of neighborhood relations, building um, positive partnerships, and um, making sure that we're doing all we can to um, bridge gaps for our, um, for our community members, especially in the world of health care. So I'm a better writer than I am a speaker so I'm gonna <laughs> have my points in front of me and I again I want to thank you all for all the hard work that you do and taking these matters so seriously for our wonderful community in Florence and thanks for having us today um, it's our understanding that this new zo zoning would make it possible for alcohol retailer to become a next door neighbor to our children's center that houses Hope Health Pediatrics and Care House of the PD both organizations focus heavily on caring for vulnerable and underserved children and families. Our center is new and Hope Health Pediatrics and Care House have significant plans for growth that will include new programs and services that enrich the lives of our children, including the addition of a playground on the property between our building and the property in question. The addition of an alcohol retailer would significantly stunt those plans. Research shows that neighborhoods with high density of alcohol retailers are prone to increased health and safety hazards, and there are already several retailers available for consumers in the vicinity. Additionally, we already experience a significant amount of foot traffic, and, the, and we are confident that adding an alcohol retailer next door will create the presence of alcohol consumption on and surrounding the safe space that we have created for our children. With alcohol being the root of many social and health problems for disadvantaged families, it's alarming to imagine what, could, what this could mean for our practices. In addition, this retailer would provide direct access to families fighting addiction and other behavioral challenges. With an organization's vision of serving others, giving hope, and changing lives, we hope the children and families that we serve are the center of the decisions being made regarding this rezoning. Thank you for having us tonight. Thank you, Ms. Strauss. Okay, I am going to, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I am now going to uh, open it up for anyone that is for this request. Now, yes, sir. <laughs> Well, I was just going to try and save you time because um, I felt like uh, enough had been said. Um, and, and I do applaud all of y'all for coming. I think it's great that you came out. Um, I, I do wish that, you know, before there had been um, 75 days invested in this venture that we would have found out more of this sooner instead of wasting so much of our time. Um, and I know that last month I came out here and I was the only person here. There was no other person that had anything negative to say about this 30 days ago. And we had already posted it for 30 days. And prior to that 30 days, we had already posted it for 15 days and ran ads in all the papers and no one objected to it. So, um, obviously, since last meeting here, the word really got out. But I'd like for everybody to understand just what we're doing here. We don't really want to put just a liquor store in the middle of this. This building has become a burden on our family. Um, we had to close the business down when COVID came because my wife got sick. She couldn't run the business and be sick, obviously. Um, then the government, of course, closed everybody down who wasn't essential, so we had to basically have a, a yard sale to get rid of perfectly good merchandise, but we had to get out of business. Um, so when we had one person to come along and finally offer us a price that was reasonable, more so than what Hope Health had offered, because Hope Health did offer a price for the location to put a playground. 
but it was a very unacceptable price. And we would love to have Hope Health say, hey, we'll give you the price that this individual was willing to give you and, and everybody can be happy because all we want to do is get rid of this burden. Um, if there were more people coming to say, hey, I want to open X at 1926 Second Loop Road and I'm willing to pay this money like this individual has done, I, I would be singing amen, hallelujah. But we were only able, and we followed the program, to entertain the offer of the one individual that came forth. We posted and ran all the ads we were required to run. We came to the zoning meeting by myself, no one else in the room except for the council people. And I, I, I just wish you would understand the the, it, we just need to try and figure out a way to move through this property. And, 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 and that's all I got. Mr. Sewell, thanks for coming forward. I did not uh, ask him to introduce himself, and that's my fault. Obviously, um, this, uh, this gentleman is the applicant um, for, for the change, and I appreciate you coming forward. Yeah. Um, Mr. I got a question. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, I'm sorry. I got a question, question yes, sir. for you. If Hope Health come up with a decent price, you'd be willing to sell it to them, am I right? Yes, sir. That's all you're asking. You're asking for I'm just, fair price for fair piece of property. Right, because the, the only thing I've done here is the one guy who made an offer, mm -hmm. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of this property. And, and like I say, this is the only gentleman that's come forth and said, hey, I'd like to buy this property. I want to renovate this property. I want to modernize it. I want to bring it into the 21st century and make it look fashionable. You know, I know we could put, and this guy owns several restaurants, we could put a restaurant there that sold alcohol. But then you've got alcohol being served later at night and during the day. And I guess that's acceptable because it's not a liquor store. We could have a CBD store, a, a convenience store that sold beer. We could sell cigarettes and, and that's okay but a liquor store is not okay. So, I mean, I, I'm just, like I say, just wish that we could have done this last month and we could have done something else for the last 30 days instead of just thinking that, that you know, hey, nobody showed up last month, maybe it won't. But obviously, like I say, word got out. Thank you, Mr. Soul. Any other questions? Um, thank you. I would like to say that um, our, our business tonight is to decide on rezoning. Um, certainly wish Mr. Soil good fortune. Um, and, and as far as Hope Health is concerned, that is outside of our reign tonight. Our, our job tonight is to decide, do we step up that zoning to allow um, a liquor store? Which would be the, the yes ma'am, I'm not through yet. Um, so, great idea, Mr. Moses. Uh, that can be done after our decision is made tonight, whether um, we decide to go forward with um, that um, more lenient zoning or we stay with um, where it is. So, um, Mr. Soul and his wife will be able to still negotiate those uh, things later. And it sounds like they're under contract anyway. All right, uh, Ms. Soule. Can I speak? Yes, please, come forward. <clears throat> Your name, please. Cynthia for, Sowell. Thanks for the record. Thank, um, thank you for having me. Um, I just want to say that um, I understand Hope Help's concerns. I understand the public's concerns. Um, it, When I bought the property, it was not the safest property. Within me being there six months, my air conditioner got stole. Flowers, I put them on the porch, they get stolen. I mean, they got broken into, they broke my windows out. Um, so, and I'm, I just was a retail monogram store, um, not a alcohol sales. Um, I, I mean, I, I didn't know we were in the day of prohibition where alcohol was not, you know, consumed. I know some people don't care for it and some people do. Um, and the hours are from seven in the morning till seven at night. I, I've, I've been to, several liquor stores, I've never seen people hanging around drinking. 
they get it, they go. Most are embarrassed, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but um, um, I'm just, I, it just, it, 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 it kind of baffles me because when I bought the property, I was not informed of the limitations of what could go there and not could go there. So this has really been a shock to me. I mean, because, I mean, I, you ride down Second Loop, there's commercial everywhere. Why would you not think that was commercial and commercial could not go there? Um, so um, I just, I, I mean, I, I personally don't understand the liquor store. You don't have to go in there. Nobody's standing outside making you go in there. Um, I mean, they're not going to sit there and drink it. But with that being said, not only the liquor store, there, there, I mean, there's, I have had several other people interested, and, and I have talked to Alfred, whoever he is, um, of Alfred through email, and, and some of those things that they have requested are not eligible to go there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's just very frustrating to know that, you know, that you've bought a commercial property and, 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 and so limited can go there. I didn't even know there was such a thing as an activity center. Um, you know, you think of commercial, you think, okay, you think of commercial. You look at the liquor store that is at the corner of Pine Needles and Ebenezer. You've got a church, you've got a playground across the street, you've got a church beside it, you've got houses within 300 feet, and then Hope Health even built down from them. <laughs> I mean, so I just don't understand what the big deal is about my property not being good enough to be it. I mean, so, I, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's wrong or something. I don't know. I mean. I feel your frustration. I, yeah. I understand that. Does any uh, of the, do any of the commissioners like to ask Ms. Soule anything? Thank you very much for coming forward. Thank you for having me. Is there anyone else who would like to speak against this? Um, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing portion of this. Um, I would like to make a few comments and I want to open it up to the commissioners before I call for a motion. Um, last month, I don't know if you all are aware of this, um, this issue um, was tied by the commission. We had one abstention and three for and three against. Um, and their varying opinions based on um, multiple things. You know, some of it is, I don't think a liquor store should be there, or I don't believe in alcohol sales. Some of it is um, the fact that this property is surrounded by other, I mean, similar zoning activity center. Uh, there's something in the planning industry that's called spot zoning. In other words, to every piece of property around the sole property is zoned um, activity center. So for this commission to upgrade that zoning from AC to um, commercial general, um, we're taking a single island of a property and increasing or decreasing its restrictions. Um, which is, uh, I guess, in the state of South Carolina, is illegal. Um, but I think Mr. Dudley, who is our uh, planning director, says it borderlines spot zoning. Um, and I might ask him to come forward and explain that to you, but if I could, you can come forward. But um, at the same time, um, the neighborhood and the businesses were already there. Um, to go and change the zoning uh, to something less uh, restrictive. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I was the one that voted, uh, one of the ones that voted against it last month. Uh, we've had varying opinions tonight. Um, uh, the two things I look after are the, the citizens, the people, the neighbors, uh, you know, they built their homes there. Um, I want to make sure personally that <clears throat> we follow the law when we do not expose um, any um, lesser types of businesses when we don't have to. Um, and then secondly, um, there is commercial zoning there. It's equivalent to our old B2, which is business two. 
Uh, B3 is the one that requires, um, uh, allows a liquor store. So they're the literally commercial, it's commercial and a good part of Second Loop. Um, and um, there, there are um, some, I guess, concerns that is it right to spot zone, and I'm going to ask Mr. Dudley to address that. Uh, sure. Thank you, Chairman. The, and I'm going to ask if we can pull this up. Yeah, this is, this is the existing zoning map for the location. Uh, activity center is noted in blue <coughs> there. So this property, as well as all of the adjacent properties and those across the road, um, are zoned activity center. Uh, spot zoning is when a smaller parcel um, that is either embedded or, or adjacent to um, property is zoned something different. Now that is often open to interpretation in courts of law. And as, as you can see in this case, that is a smaller piece of property that is in the middle of an activity center zoning. And I believe if it was a larger piece of property, um, because it's, it's both commercial zonings, activity center and um, you know, general commercial, there's different intensities of development that's allowed there. But I believe if, if parcels were assembled um, for potentially a larger development, it wouldn't be I guess as close to spot zoning as, as what it currently is. But, but as it's presented, it, it does meet the kind of, I guess, the sniff test for, for spot zoning, although both are commercial. Um, and part of it is, is we did look at the dimensions of the lot just to see if it was to be rezoned to general commercial, could development occur on that lot? Um, so um, general commercial lots are required to be 100 feet wide um, at a minimum, 200 feet for most uses, and then, but the minimum is 100 feet and it depends on the use. This lot is about, what did we say, Alfred? 90, 90, feet. 90 feet. So it's close, um, but a bit short. Um, you know, setbacks in the general commercial are, are higher than um, the activity center, which would you know, if this building was demolished and it were to be redeveloped, it would be very difficult to produce a sizable building on this lot with that zoning. You know, general commercial is our kind of, it's where the Walmarts and the McDonald's and the, you know, the higher intensity uses go. So um, I, I believe that just the size of this lot and the fact that um, if, if it were to redevelop under commercial general standards would be difficult um, and it's embedded in the activity center here does make it, I guess, in um, the planning department's opinion, um, difficult to justify the, the rezoning of this parcel in this case. Um, I think there was another question in your, and I've, I've lost focus here. I've lost my... I have too, and I'm gonna open you up to the rest of the commissioners, but um... One more statement, and that is, um, last month, I, I know the souls. Um, our, we have children very similar ages, and uh, we all felt the passion that y'all have with um, what you're being exposed to and the difficulty. Um, and that's why the recommendation to defer to this month so that maybe you could talk with your prospective buyer and consider a salon or some um, lesser use, and y'all have taken that off the table. We did that because we absolutely did not want to slam the door on, on, on y'all because our passion, um, you know, for your financial well-being is, is really important. This commission has to look at the bigger picture, and whatever we decide, the people that are really going to determine this are going to be the city council. Um, and that's when it really gets um, a little sticky because they have constituents that vote for them. Nobody votes for us. Um, and we're not paid much either. But <laughs> we might get a bottle of water every now and then. Um, do the commissioners have any questions um, for Mr. Dudley? Yes, sir. I do. Um, is there been a precedent set on second loop where someone's tried to, to increase the use of a piece of property or 
uh, lessen the restrictions that's been denied or approved? We had a case a few years ago um, where a residentially zoned area along Second Loop uh, did try to go to a more intense residential use. Um, that was right across from Food Line uh, there in, in that area. And uh, it, it actually got uh, uh, withdrawn uh, before the final vote was made. But that was the last case, and it did draw a fair amount of attention. Um, but that's the last one that I've been involved with. There's also one on the corner of Hampton Drive that was tried to increase the use of the property. Uh, I know it well because I was my father, and he was a nine. Um, same situation. He, he didn't want a liquor store or anything like that. He just wanted more increase of just a regular commercial use um, in that area, and it, kind of the same setup. Mm -hmm. Churches, uh, food line across the street, businesses around it, and it's a nod. So um, I just want to see if there's anything else. Mm -hmm. That's that's all that that I'm aware of. But you know, we we didn't go through the entire history. Yeah. Thank you. Any other commissioners? I just have one question. Okay. Ms. Okay. Murray. Just to be clear. We are being asked to make this decision based on the zoning, not on what's you know what may go in this property, what may what what type of business may go in this property, right? That's correct. It's, that's not our decision. What type of business? It's just on the zoning. Right? That's correct. But but okay. you do have to look at the potential businesses and the uses that would go there ver in, in the varying zoning districts. And the the existing zoning is very. I mean, it's, it's a commercial district, and it is very much open to lots of commercial uses, you know, retail, offices, um, even... You said even a convenience store. Even, even a, a light convenience store, like, would be allowed in the commercial reuse district would be allowed there. So it's, it's still a very open zoning district. But about the only thing that's outright denied um, compared to commercial general is an, an alcohol, you know, off-site alcohol beverage sales. Um, tattoo facilities and heavy heavy retail like your Walmarts and your Lowe's things of that nature and veterinary services um, which I'm assuming that's because of the noise associated because activity center is a mixed-use district and um, you know and there's some conditions that may apply some some conditional or special exceptions that may apply because it is a mixed-use district, but those are the those are the you know the main uses that are outright different in the in the zoning designations. Other than that, they're very very similar. I think okay, that's something, Ms. Murray, that you and you bring up a good point. If we took the liquor store completely off the board, and it was going to be something that still required um, that uh, um, activity, uh, excuse me, commercial general. It's still spot zoning, mm -hmm. and it's still upgrading mm -hmm. um, uh, a zoning, whether it's a liquor store or not. Now we all have opinions, and I, I hate to, you know, throw a liquor store like it's you know kryptonite or something. It um, uh, it's it's more than that. It is uh, opening up what could go there in the future. You know, the the liquor store could stay open for three years and go out of business and but that zoning will stay forever okay. and once we change it to um, the commercial general it's not going back okay. any other questions for staff thank you mr dudley all right with that said i'll call for a motion i'll make a motion that we approve the zoning i have a motion to approve do i have a second The motion does not carry. I'll call for another motion. I'll make a motion we deny. I have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion to deny and a second. Any discussion? Um, discussion. Okay. Um, we just, just made a statement that uh, uh, I'm trying to get this, make sure I'm saying the right stuff. You, there's no other things that he can put on this property with. We did not. That's what I'm saying. This piece of property, and then you saying it's a uh, spot zone, and also that's considered also. No, only if we go up to commercial general. Okay, and then the, if you make we making the motion. He's what can he 
with B2, what can you put on this prop? That's what I'm concerned about. Just about everything except for liquor, tattoo, and um, veterinary. In other words, he... Um, I'm, 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 I'm just getting, I'm just a little bit confused with these B12, B2, and commercial zoning. But you say it's up and down, curious, down second loop road is all, the majority of it is commercial zoning, am I right? Correct. Am I right? Yes, sir. It's just one, just one little piece of property, that's what you're saying, that we, that, uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm saying it right, but I don't want to say the wrong thing. The, um, the... This property is zoned activity center, which is very comparable to the old B2 right. zoning designation. Um, you know, it's it's this property as well as the surrounding property um, and the, the commercial parcels across the road. They're all zoned activity center. Uh, the closest commercial general, I think, is about a quarter mile away. It's up at the corner of Cashua and Second Loop, and. The activity center does allow a, a lot of commercial uses. You can put, you know, low impact restaurants there. You can put retail there. Um, you could even put a small convenience store there at that location, as long as it could be developed on the site. And that convenience store can sell alcohol. Better. It could be a component of it, but as, but it couldn't be the major component of it. So it would have to be, you know, less than fifty percent of the sales, and then it wouldn't be considered. And all, you know, an alcohol sales establishment. But, it, but don't all uh, C stores have that same requirement? It, they it can't be a full. They do. A percentage of the total business. That's correct. If they're permitted as a, as a convenience store, that that would fall under over all convenience right. stores. Yes. Miss Murray. Okay. Like last month, we had another case, another um, presentation like this. It involved another small property, and Miss Hines, um, I thought you, you said. Like when it came up to, if it was spot zoning, there was nothing that we didn't have any option but to deny. Is that is that kind of the same situation? Is this the same situation? It would be based on what he has said. That yeah, that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have a motion. I have a second to deny. deny. Mm -hmm. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of denying the request, raise your hand. All those against? Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Missoul, I'll do my best to try to help you uh, through my business and others to um, find an alternative and certainly working with your prospective buyer. Um, we, we do wish you the best. Uh, it does not carry. Um, the zoning will remain at Activity Center, and um, and I appreciate everybody's participation tonight. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is PC 2021-34. Uh, this is a request to zone NC15 pending annexation. Good evening. Miss Elaine, well, I didn't see you behind the podium. You get to see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a much simpler uh, request. This is a request to zone NC15, um, parcel located at 2468 Parsons Gate in the uh, Windsor Forest neighborhood. As you can see from this um, vicinity map, it is the only parcel left on Parsons Gate, just about, um, that is not within the city limits. Everything in the gray is in the city already. This is an undeveloped parcel, but the owner is going to build a house on it, and they just wanted to be annexed into the city um, to get the city services. And um, everything around it is zoned NC15, as would be, this one is requesting that type of zoning. And um, it is in the residential auto urban area uh, for the future land use. And um, as I said, it's a vacant lot surrounded by single family homes, and that's the intention for the property as well. So that concludes staff's report. I will say all were this easy. Thank you, Ms. Lane. Uh, any questions of staff from the commissioners? Um, hearing none, do we have a public hearing portion of this? Let me get my hearing. Yes. Yes, thank you. I'll open up the public hearing portion of this. If anyone would like to come forward that is not for this um, request, uh, I'll ask you to do so. If there's anyone that would like to speak on behalf of this request, you're welcome to do so. 
Not seeing any, I'll close the public hearing portion of this and call for a motion. So move, make a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve as submitted. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say hi. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I said hi. Um, <laughs> and all those against say nay. Um, the ayes have it and a hi to. Um, the last item on the agenda is PC 2021-35. Good after a good evening, sir. Good evening. How is everybody? Good. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's patience. New microphone, still getting used to it. So this is for the consideration of the abandonment of what was going to be, it looks like Malden Drive at, at one point. Um, so here it is on the vicinity map. Um, it looks as though it would have connected uh, Sydney Avenue, Wimbledon Avenue, and um, also the parcels to the north. Uh, there, it, it appears there used to be a right of way running up through there as well, and it's actually been absorbed uh, by the two um, homeowners on Ansley Street. So here's the location map, and we're calling this Honey Hill Drive um, because it would run right into Honey Hill Drive and Wimbledon Avenue. Um, this Originally this request was brought to us by the owner of 1915 Hayden Court um, with the blessing of all nine adjacent property owners um, who would like to have the city abandon their interest so it can go into private ownership and they would equally divide the land up um, amongst themselves. Um, here is a utility map that shows city utilities. Um, there is a um, sewer manhole that runs down Wimbledon Avenue. It's about five feet off the edge of the road. And there is also a fire hydrant, which ends uh, on Wimbledon Avenue, actually in, in someone's front yard. And uh, the city is just wants to make sure that an easement uh, would appear on any plat that is drawn up just to make sure if we need to get in there with any um, maintenance or do any upgrades that we could do that. The blue line is something that the locators were unable to find. We think this is probably just a map error, but they've been out there and could not locate a water line uh, within the right of way. Um, there is also a ditch that runs north of Wimbledon Avenue that the city would also like to have access to just in case we need to get in there and do maintenance. We don't necessarily have ownership of it, but if worse comes to worse, we could get in there with, with equipment and actually prevent um, flooding issues. Uh, so here's some site photos. Uh, this is the end of Wimbledon Avenue where it runs out into the right of way. Um, and that's facing north. And you can see the ditch uh, kind of running along in the middle of the picture. That's something that the city will want to preserve. And there you can see the manhole cover where the, where the sewer line is, which would also be uh, part of the easement. Excuse me, can I interrupt you, please? Yeah. Uh, sir, we don't um, like to have cell phone um, communication going on during our meeting. Hello, sir. Uh, if, if I am sorry, by all means. Oh, it's, it's quite right. Thank you, and I, I hope things are okay. I got you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, That's, a good, Johnson, go ahead, That's a good sign. That's right. All right. So um, on the photo on the left, you can see the ditch a little better. And if you look at the um, wooden fence, that's about where the right of way ends. And then this is a sign from Sydney Avenue. This is a, another end of the right of way. Here is the proposed plat. Um, the city, as I said, will require a utility easement for water and sewer lines. So this plat would need to be updated to include the easements that we're still kind of working out between staff and also obviously would like to speak with any property owners about um, easements on the plat. Um, the, the city would require a stormwater easement for the ditch. Um, and then once the plat has been changed to where all parties are satisfied, including the city, we would just send her out a, a letter, including the plat in the letter, and just have everyone sign off. 
all nine adjacent property owners. So at this time, this does divide it among seven property owners. Um, it looks like the two properties to the north have in the past absorbed probably this part of the easement. Um, but whether or not they still feel that they would like a piece of the abandoned right-of-way is up to them to decide. Um, and after that, it will require city council approver, uh, approval once signatures are obtained. And that does conclude staff's report. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any questions from st or off staff? Um, so our job tonight is to approve or disapprove um, the giving of this property. The city will handle all of the um, easements and the legal side of that. Um, I guess Mr. Peterson and city Absolutely. engineering will deal with that. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. Mr. Dunn? Yeah, if, um, you know, planning commission's job is to just consider the abandonment of, of the property. Since we've checked with all the departments and the, the main concern are water and sewer, you know, access. Sure. So as long as we have access to that, um, it would be appropriate. Um, it then goes to city council and we'll take the recommendation um, from planning commission for the abandonment uh, to city council and then recommend that the property be declared a surplus property to the city and then could be transferred to the adjacent property owners. And once that's passed, then the plats could be recorded. Excellent. Thank you. All right, I'll open the, uh, any other further questions of Mr. Johnson? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Um, I'll open the public hearing uh, portion of this. If anyone would like to speak against this recommendation, uh, you're welcome to come forward. Seeing none, anyone that is for this recommendation, please. <coughs> Good evening. Your your name, please. My name is Julie Cord. I'm the uh, homeowner at 1915. I'm actually one of the newer owners on this little strip. I've been there for 17 years. Wow. It was about 30 feet behind the fence on my property that I go in and, you know, clean out from time to time. And there are some troubling, very tall trees back there that I just got to move on somehow. So I started talking with the other property owners. Some, some of them have been there much longer than I have. And I think everyone else here tonight is, is part of the neighborhood. Um, Great. That can probably give you some other historical stories about it, but it's uh, something that we're all in one way or another maintaining those portions around us and would just like to go ahead and formally absorb those since that road is never gonna go through at this point and um, just make it a little easier going forward for us and for future property owners. Thank you, Ms. Cord. Any questions for Ms. Cord? You know, these are one of the situations as commissioners, it's, it's like Christmas for us, because if the city doesn't care, we certainly don't care. And we, <laughs> we, we, we would love to give that to you if the city's okay for it. So um, is there anyone else that'd like to come forward? Yes, sir, please. And I, I'm really feeling guilty for calling you down on the cell phone. So. No, you did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Your name, sir? Uh, it's Bud Litton. I live at 703 Wimbledon Avenue. And we bought the house that is there now in July of 1979. Um, we maintained the drive that comes beside our house that was going to be molded. We maintained the other side of that house since 1979, the other side of the yard. We were told by the developer that they would run a street through there, and then they told us no, but they would make a call to act. We endured several years of flooding till the city put the ditch that was mentioned down through there yes, and uh, kept the water drained. They used to keep a sump pump out there to pump out the end of the street. Um, we asked for this to be um, turned over so we can deed it. 
uh, my wife and I are getting up in years, and if we died, then that property is just going to be floundering there. Um, but we would appreciate consideration, and we've certainly adopted it as our own. We couldn't get in the house without the drive, which would have been the old molding. But um, I just thank you for your time, uh, your consideration, and uh, it would be nice if you could come out and look at the house and the lot and everything and get it all in perspective. But um, And everybody that's there has been there for a while, so nobody's moving. The man behind me bought the city, the property from the city, that went on to Ainsley. And because uh, he, at that time, they couldn't get anything done, so he went ahead and bought it from somebody. And uh, I think he paid $24,000 for it. But uh, now he's moved away and it's part of the house. But without further ado, thank you so much for letting us talk. And Thank you so much come for coming in. forward. And I, the spelling of your name is D O N or L I T T O N? T T O N. Uh -huh. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming forward. Um, it sounds like a, a wonderful neighborhood. Um, it, would anybody else, in, would, would you like have any questions for Mr. Lutton? That is Aaron Ray. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Lutton before he sits? Mm -mm. Thank you, Mr. Lutton. Thank you very much. Right. Yes, sir. We'd love to have you come forward. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chip. Thank you. And your name, sir? Clarence Matthews. Mr. Matthews, thank you for coming forward. 703 Sydney Avenue. For Correct. years, I have cleaned along the shrubbery that I had out there. But I have a problem with some trees that reach to the clouds. Yes, sir. And they're very dangerous. And I would like someone to come out and look at those trees between uh, my property and Mrs. Starr. The thing is, if there's a huge storm or too much rain, if they ever uproot, they're gonna crash through our houses if they come that way. If the other way, there's gonna reach maybe another house or two. And it's dangerous. And I like someone in the city, not just to abandon the property, look at it and do some clearing too, please. Well, Mr. Matthews, um, our, our task tonight is decide uh, or, you know, approve or deny the, the city to give this property, which I assume that you would be participating in the taking of additional land? It depends on what the giving is about. And that's a good point. Um, <laughs> what will have to be discussed uh, with the city, the city manager, uh, planning director is um, who's responsible for those trees and how they should be dealt with. Um, our job, and I wish you great luck. You have a great, we have a great city staff. Um, Thank you. Um, and we will make a decision uh, on, on the gifting, um, but I would encourage you to stay in touch with the, the planning department and let them direct you uh, in areas with city engineering, city, um, you know, utilities, all of those are there to, to help. I understand. Any questions uh, for Mr. Matthew? Thank you so much for coming forward. You're welcome, sir. All right. Uh, I'm going to close the public hearing portion of this um, and call for a motion. So move. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second um, to approve the request as submitted. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay. The ayes have it unanimously. Uh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, Merry Christmas. Must <laughs> 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 be adjourned. Oh yes, and the last and my favorite item on the agenda is adjournment. Mr. Moses. What is, he's got something he want to say. No, I'm good. I'm no. good. I just, ha happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time with your family. Yes. Thank you. And All right. Enjoy always, a good meal. Always yes. in favor of adjournment. Uh, uh, thank you all very much. <laughs> Appreciate your participation tonight.